Hey, welcome to Unstable Topics, a fast-paced, jam-packed, unhinged, bestie podcast filled with facts, reacts, and made-up games in between. We're your hosts, Sarah and Maggie, and we're excited for you to join our best friend hangout, where we surprise one another with things we find interesting or hilarious just to see how the other will react. Our friendship might be totally stable, but you never know what your bestie might throw your way to knock you off your game. So come shake things up, learn something new, and laugh along with us. This is Unstable Topics. Meanwhile, in New Jersey... So, Marissa, what talking points do you want to hit on in this week's episode? Well, Jackie, let's talk about how the film addresses the patriarchy. Ooh, and representation of marginalized people. Ooh, ooh, and even philosophical ramifications of good versus evil in horror. We can point out the triangle boobs, talk about the blood splatter, and oh, the practical effects. (sighs) Um, and also the male gaze? My gaze at the males. Hi-o! From feminism to fangirling, the Jersey Ghouls cover all the bases of horror from a woman's perspective. New episodes are uploaded every other Sunday. Just search Jersey Ghouls to find us on social media and your favorite podcasting app. Dylan. Hey, Matt. This one was your call, and I'm so excited uh, because this was like a cartoon that I definitely used to watch all the time as a kid and kind of stopped watching. I mean, it stopped being a cartoon, basically, but I I always think about Rocket Power. I feel like Rocket Power, there was two cartoons that I think of in the exact same breath. Yeah. And I preferred the other one over Rocket Power in my memories. And it was Rocket okay. Power on Nickelodeon and The Weekenders on Disney's One Saturday Morning. Okay, I did not watch Weekenders at all. So Weekenders was like a similar vibe of like cool 90s kids and like the whole episode was just about like every episode took place on the weekend after school and just kind of covering like what what craziness they got into that weekend. And that one had, uh, what's his face? I'm playing it, James Marsden. Um, so, oh, uh, I think I'm saying the wrong name, honestly, the one from Hocus Pocus <laughs> and, and Boy Meets World and a goofy movie. Um, oh yeah. James Marsden is, he's someone James else. Marsden's the, Jason Marsden. The guy it's from Jason Enchanted. Mar- yeah, 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 yeah. Jason yeah. Marsden. And here's my very first thought watching Rocket Power for the first time in probably 20 years. Yeah. I feel like... <laughs> When yeah. I was a kid watching this show, yeah, the voices of the Rocket children sounded more like kids than they do <laughs> now as an adult. Like, their friends absolutely sound like kids. Like, whoever they hired to voice, like, their two best friends that are always yeah. getting into trouble with, I'm like, yeah, those sound like like teenagers and then it'll go to like either one of the rocket siblings and they're just like hello friends so have you have you have you looked them up because they are kids they all were kids at the time they were all kids at the time yes well they (laughs) must have gotten some older kids to do the the um it is a little older the kid that played otto was one of the main kids from slappy and the stinkers that, Do you remember that, that sounds movie? like you just made up a thing. I did not make that If you that asked up. me what Slappy and the Stickers were, <laughs> stinkers. I would... Stinkers. Stinkers. If you asked me what Slappy and the Stickers were, I would say that they were the opening act before Five Iron Frenzy. <laughs> so Slappy <laughs> like... and the Stinkers was a 90s kids movie where the kid that voiced Otto from Rocket Power, uh, the kid that played Spanky in the Little Rascals movie... Um, they're hanging out and they kidnap a sea lion from the aquarium. What the hell? I'm looking at the the cover art. 
I have never heard of this movie. No, I was I, I was talking to Teddy about it earlier. That movie rips. <laughs> I have not seen Christmas? that movie in easily 20 years, but that movie, if I remember, if I'm remembering it correctly, that movie is dope. <laughs> well, this should shock no one. Critics they go down like a big water you. slide at the end. According to Rotten Tomatoes, what? the film holds a 0% rating. I don't know how you know this movie existed, Dylan, because listen to this abysmal thing. Okay. <laughs> Made on a budget of $8 million. Yeah. It made eighty thousand dollars in its box <laughs> office run. <laughs> Dude, I this had this is, movie on VHS and everything. This is like the bomb of the century. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Can you? Will you please watch Slappy and the Stinkers? Uh, yeah. Next time you please. come over, Fuck we yeah. can watch we'll it together. Watch Slappy and the Stinkers. Yeah. So the whole point was that the the kid that does the voice of Otto. I mean, yeah, I think he was in his his teens at the yeah, point Joseph when he was Austin. doing Rocket power but he was still young like it's not like he i don't think he was an adult yeah he was Otto. my he's my age so whatever time this aired yeah, he was the same age as me how old were yeah. you in 2003 i was about to be a senior in high school yeah so i think that makes sense i, I mean, mean he said i'm in fifth grade <laughs> i but i he mean said, listen father i'm in fifth grade <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah but i mean I, I feel like you're leaning back on the whole like as as fans of horror movies, we have oh, forty year olds sure. playing high school kids. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think you're falling back on the wrong thing here. <laughs> no, no. But at the end of the day, this was a blast. Like I'm oh, all joking awesome. aside, it was. This fun. is how I talk now. Like the how the kids <laughs> speak. It's so funny. I was I like that's how I talk now. This show had such a big impact on me, and I feel like. I told you when I brought this idea up is I want to talk about early 2000s skate culture. Were you ingrained in it like as much as mainstream culture was at the time? I want it to be. Yeah. So my skate experience was that I uh, my friends started to get into skateboarding. Yeah. And I was like, "Ooh, let me try that. And like the very first time I se stepped on to that skateboard, it was on a cement driveway heading downward and I just that thing flew so fast yeah. out from underneath my feet <laughs> and it was like landed on your back and like felt like the wind knock out of yeah. you type situation and I just immediately concluded well not for me but I was <laughs> always I mean I listened to ska music I was friends with the skaters yeah. I've always been jealous like even now nearing 40 I wish that I could just be like, fuck it, and just like hop on a skateboard and like skate to like the local convenience store to get food. <laughs> no, Dylan, I can't because I don't have any center of gravity or balance. Like, you can learn. It's, it's not <laughs> a lack of desire. It's a lack of skill set. Um, and like, I don't even, the craziest thing is like, I don't even want to know how to do tricks. I just want to be able to successfully kick one foot to get some speed and then just stand and feel the wind in my face. You know what I mean? That like, was very much, that was very much my end was yeah. like, I don't, I could never do tricks or anything. I was the one that hung around, but I could still ride. Like I could, I could ride and I, I would use it as a mode of transportation. But, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but like even but yeah, I'll, doing tricks were not, were not yeah. my forte. Like, even now, in the last, like, four or five years, there's been, like, three different times that I've been around people who had even, like, a long board. Yeah. And I just, I stand on it, and I'm <laughs> just, like, not, <laughs> the 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 confidence level is, like, non-existent. I just get so jittery and, like, yeah. unsure of anything. So, I, like I think this, I've, I've just come to the conclusion I can't do it. If this, like, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games and... and bam and jackass getting as big as it was and and skateboard culture like really taking over did kind of shape my interests moving forward and even what i am still into to this day so like going back and watching this um i think we have been getting to re-experience a lot of things from our childhood uh, doing this show and doing other shows and whatnot this was one of those ones that as i was watching it i was like cool i still like this there's like other shows yeah. that i've watched that i'm like god i can't believe i ever ever enjoyed this i'm gonna be honest dude a couple of years ago i uh 
this was a couple years ago. This was when is T Nick still a station at some point? I don't know. Maybe I the only non Nick channel I remember was Nickelodeon Gas. Yeah. Uh, when I was in college, and I would just when I was studying for like a test or whatever on on, on in the background would be like fucking yeah. figure it out and Legends of the Hidden Temple and all that jazz. Um, so they were doing um they were showing uh reruns of like Keenan and Kel from back in the day. Okay. And um I'm gonna be honest, man, I was sitting there watching that and I'm like, this is horrendous. That's how this I feel is about really bad. <laughs> I've I've avoided watching any all that because I know that yeah. that's probably age like milk. Yeah. I find that Nick tunes age a little bit better than the live action Nickelodeon shows in a big way. Did you watch um, Good Burger too? Boy, did I! <laughs> I started Good Burger too. <laughs> no, I, Dylan. Very few things do I start and not finish. I'm not yeah, like you. That's a, that I, is a choice you made. <laughs> I, I listen. It's bad. <laughs> This is not a shock to anybody. It's bad. No. But I also was like, who was asking for this? Like, no even as someone, even as someone who like still enjoys the first Good Burger through like a rose tinted glasses kind of way, I am like very aware it is strictly through a rose tinted <laughs> glasses so, kind of but way. The thing like, is, is like even it, it's it's weird the effect that 90s kids have had and i think it's because of the access to the internet and being able to blast everything that you enjoyed from a childhood's perspective cuz i remember being a kid and after like the first few times it was aired it was really hard to find a way to yeah. watch good burger well, i remember i had to find the vhs it went on vhs and took a very long time to get released on dvd it did and i it remember did. finding the vhs at suncoast and being yeah. like holy shit that i could, did not even know this existed that was me finding the vhs of cannibal the musical after hearing about it for years. yeah yep. um, but like the thing is there's like this 90s nostalgia that is like very false um someone actually yes. just sent me a tiktok the other day where it was like like a picture of the inside of a video store or whatever. And it said like, back in my day, you just went in here. This was your Netflix. There was no better Friday night than the video store. And the guy was like, I'm going to push back on that. Do you actually remember what it was like renting a video? Because there was only like 20 copies of the movie you won it. So yeah. if you didn't get there soon enough, then you wandered the store for seemingly an hour just trying to find any title that grabbed yeah. you and interested you. Like, at least on the internet, if there's a movie on Netflix that everybody wants to see, there is an infinite amount of way, like copies of it to be watched yeah. that night. Like, you don't get a message from Netflix. It's like, sorry, 20 people are already watching this movie. Try again tomorrow. <laughs> like, And I'm like, you know what? I still miss video rentals, but that is a good point. There were definitely as many disappointing video rental nights. Well, that's the thing is we miss like, the idea of it. We yeah. miss what it represents. We miss our childhood. Like that. Like that's it's, the that's it. Like, it's the miss the childhood for me. And I think this is you and I both. I think it's part of the physical copy thing that we both have. Yep. Is like to me, I just hate media that I care about feeling so disposable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, like there's so many movies that I've watched on Netflix and because I don't have a copy of it on my shelf reminding me to rewatch it, it's just like I watched it and then it's over and I move on from it. Yeah. And then occasionally I start to watch it again because I'm like, I don't think I ever got around to watching this. And then I'm like halfway oh, through I it and being like, this. oh, yeah, I did watch this. Yeah. Like. You know, it's it is a bummer in that sense, and also, also I just that kind I of really want Let It Snow on DVD or yeah. Blu-ray so bad. Like, uh, I do prefer to watch some shit on on physical, and I will I will pick up a 4K yeah. uh, Blu-ray that I'm really into. I'm gonna be completely honest. I am not. I I have pulled way out of the game of upgrading my entire selection oh, yeah. or collection. No, but, There's no fucking way. But even like in little things like, especially in the sitcom world I would say. Yeah. Like DVDs are still the way to go if you want to watch stuff like Scrubs or Friends or The Simpsons for no other reason than like when you go to watch most of those shows on streaming, A, the song rights have completely lapsed so most of the songs are replaced with just like 
generic instrumental sound alike songs yeah. and B the streaming services almost exclusively have the syndicated version. So you lose yeah. like jokes and, and scenes. Sometimes I think there's like episodes of friends. You lose like four minutes of show. Well, that's when you the thing watch is, it. I, <laughs> like, I also want to get, um, but it's funny. I don't own all of the, the seasons of South park for multiple reasons. Number one, I want the commentaries very yeah. bad. Um, I also, like there's episodes that aren't streaming anymore for specific reasons, which yeah. again, I no shame to them, whatever. Yeah. But I, I do want to have access to those communities. Episodes. Another one. You know what I mean? Like there's another one. one of the best episodes of community is not readily yeah. available right now. Yeah. And like, I totally understand why I think they're wrong in that specific. Yeah. Case. I, 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 <laughs> but, it's, it's really weird. Yeah. Um, if but community we will, was doing what they're like, saying they're doing i would be like no all for it get that yeah. episode off but of they're here. absolutely not <laughs> they're not no <laughs> Hey, welcome to Unstable Topics, a fast-paced, jam-packed, unhinged, bestie podcast filled with facts, reacts, and made-up games in between. We're your hosts, Sarah and Maggie, and we're excited for you to join our best friend hangout, where we surprise one another with things we find interesting or hilarious just to see how the other will react. Our friendship might be totally stable, but you never know what your bestie might throw your way to knock you off your game. So come shake things up, learn something new, and laugh along with us. This is Unstable Topics. Meanwhile, in New Jersey... So, Marissa, what talking points do you want to hit on in this week's episode? Well, Jackie, let's talk about how the film addresses the patriarchy. Ooh, and representation of marginalized people. Ooh, ooh, and even philosophical ramifications of good versus evil and horror. We can point out the triangle boobs, talk about the blood splatter, and oh, the practical effects. <sighs> um, and also the male gaze? My gaze at the males. hi From feminism to fangirling, the Jersey Ghouls cover all the bases of horror from a woman's perspective. New episodes are uploaded every other Sunday. Just search Jersey Ghouls to find us on social media and your favorite podcasting app. 91 Donkey Lane is a magical apartment complex that contains immense power, but lacks intelligent inhabitants. What is happening? I'm getting texts. Why are we getting a lot of texts? People found out what we did. Oh, dividing Mike Myers into an infinite amount of tiny Mike Myers? Listen to 91 Donkey Lane for free on Spotify or your favorite podcasting app. More at 91donkeylane.com. See you there, you donkeys. Back to Rocket Power. This yes, episode this show I mean, holds up. <laughs> obviously, this this episode spoke to me as a dog walker. Uh, That's, I was, dude, I was I excited. It really captured. I'm, I'm excited. It really captured the truth about dog walking because, you know, after this Christmas, I'm hanging up my leash. Uh, I think for good. I think I'm. I'm yeah. finally stepping away from the. I'll still speaking dog which, sit for people. Speaking of but, which, I apologize for the pitter patters. Uh, Teddy just got home from the grocery store, and the dogs are like, "Oh my god, what's up, mom? Hey, yeah. listen, so, that's all right." <laughs> well, if you learn to ride a fucking skateboard, you could I know, never I could, give this up. <laughs> no, dear God. Um, but yeah, it so, sucks. Look, when she has to pick up that huge poop, I'm like, I feel that girl. Like, there are some dogs that I walk that have some real dietary issues and I am miserable every time that it comes to that part of the gig where I'm just like, Oh God, this yeah. is awful and gross. So I do, I will come back to the dog walking thing. Cause I do have a question um, when we get there. Uh, but just to set this up, so we've got Reggie Otto. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Rocket Power is, it is about a family that lives out on the West Coast, very much surf, skate, extreme sports culture, very much playing up that from the late 90s, early 2000s vibes. This is one of the uh, later seasons of Rocket Power, actually. And our main characters, uh, Reggie and Otto, um, decide to uh, start walking dogs to earn money. Uh, they learned about this job from their buddy Twister, and they're trying to earn money to get their father, Ray, or Ray Mundo, um, if you're not into the whole brevity thing, a longboard surfboard for Christmas, because they haven't been able to get him like a good present. But on the flip side, all Ray cares about is these are these tr Christmas 
traditions. Uh, very yeah, much, I think, we're playing a lot you of Matt Kelly boxes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was this was you and I. As a matter of fact, there's one point where like Ray really wants them to watch this like the, Christmas like, special, like the yeah. puppets. And I looked at Teddy as that was on. I was like, this is some shit Matt Kelly would make me watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One thousand percent, and I would be absolutely in the right to force that upon you because it's a masterpiece that needs to be watched every year. Oh, totally, I get it. <laughs> I don't, so, I don't um, like you even implying that I might be in the wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all while they're also there, who I consider their uncle Tito. Um, he is trying to be Santa Claus, but they won't let him be Santa Claus because he adds a brudda at the end of Ho, Ho, Ho. I love that. He goes, Ho, 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 brudda. Um, to which I just want to say, fuck yeah. Like, let's yeah. let's add that to all every time somebody says Ho, Ho, Ho. I, I, you and I are of the same mind because I think that's verbatim what one of my notes said. Hell yeah. Um, so let's take it back a little bit. Uh, to the beginning, let's start with your notes. We kind of gave a rundown of what the show's about. So. I actually, I watched this so recently that I didn't even write down notes. Because I was just Sweet. like, I'm literally going to watch this and dive right in. So, Hell yeah. Um, yeah, so I would say that the, the ba- we've, we've already tackled so much of it, right? Like the nostalgia yeah. of the show, Tito with the Brada thing was a big thought that I had. The dog walking and the obsession with tradition. Um and I do yeah. like that this was like a morality tale to the kids of like, mm-hmm. no, like tradition is important to a certain extent. But like the dad also, you, you have that perfect like coming to a to an agreement of like, I shouldn't be forcing these traditions on you just because they bring me closer to your mom. We should create our own yeah. uh, traditions. But man, I did like I've. I did. I felt that tingle when he gave them their gifts that were like special <sighs> things from their mom. Um, Dude, that I, was rough. I it was so funny <laughs> that it like um Teddy goes, I think I remember how this this goes. And I'm like, What? I, I don't at all. And she goes I said, Wait, it's got something to do with the mom, doesn't it? So this is the first time the mom's ever kind of brought up on the show. Yeah. And I do love they're like, this is that gold coin that she got off of the uh, off of her search for the buried lost treasure or some shit, the the sunken treasure. Yeah. Um and here's her trophy that she won as a as an extreme surf champ. And I'm like, and here's the chattering teeth from the first time your mother fought the Joker. And yeah. here's the thing like I just things that increase in insanity. <laughs> Uh, the mom apparently oh, so that good. you never find out why how the mom has passed away. Uh, there's actually multiple fan theories out there, uh, varying from cancer to surfing accident and whatnot. Um, but that is a very sweet part. I'm gonna be real. I really thought that Nickelodeon was gonna go the route of they didn't end up getting the surfboard because they yeah. kind of hint at that. Yeah, the guy so, flips the sign to close. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, shit. I, I was like, if these kids showed up, missed all my traditions, and still didn't get me a present, <laughs> then, <laughs> there's no moral tale going to fix yeah. this at the end. Yeah, they there's going to be to pay in Dylan's house. <laughs> like, Go sleep outside one, with those goddamn you miss, dogs. You missed my fucking traditions. <laughs> this, this whole time, all I wanted you here was to wear an elf hat and watch this stupid puppet special with me. This Charlie Brown special with me. And then, and two, you couldn't even get me a fucking present because Otto couldn't help but fucking race Twister's brother. Dude, that was the most frustrating part was when she's like, why would you do that? And he's like, I couldn't let him not race me. It's like, you very much good. (laughs) He's like, what are you, a chicken? And he's like, a chicken? And I'm like, what is he, fucking Marty Marty McFly? McFly? Yeah. Uh, God um, damn it! So this is, this is what I what I was gonna ask. When you walk dogs, is do you like have like a certain time where you're like, okay, I'm gonna take this dog from this time to this time, or is it I pick up the dog and whenever it's done, I'm bringing the dog back? No, it's so. Here I'm gonna. I mean, this will mean nothing to the listeners, but uh, so the way that we do it now is if you look in my phone. There's literally yeah. an app called Pet Sit, 
and I click into that and it'll have, I mean, I have nothing in here right now, but yeah. when I log in, it'll have a list of what the walks are and the time frame in which I can do them um, yeah. based on the person's request. And then I just click in, punch in, and it says like 10 minute walk or 15 minute walk around the block or a 30 minute walk. And I just take the dog for a walk, okay. bring the dog back and then punch out and drive to the next house and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's that's basically it. And I can like, like I said, like I know what the time frame is, right? Because it's mostly people who are at yeah. work and they just need someone to get their dog out of the house for just a little bit. So, you know, it might say like, go to this dog's house at 1130. But maybe I've got like a podcast recording at 12 and I know that that dog can be walked as early as 1045. I can just go there at 1045 and okay. do the dog that, walk. That, that like, was my curiosity curiosity because like their dog walking schedule was all out of whack so was, i was like they're like let's rush this dog and i'm like i don't think you can do that i feel no. like there's a specific time that you're taking the dog well uh, and it yeah. costs different like i mean in a normal circumstance anyway it costs different money for how long the walk is you know yeah. what i mean like a 15 minute walk is cheaper than a 30 minute walk which is cheaper than like a stay at yeah. their house house sit you know you what, know I, what? Mean? I take back everything i said fuck this show Yep, it's terrible. <laughs> no. All no. because they didn't get the logic of dog walking correct. Yeah, they didn't. Also, I can I can almost guarantee that um, something that would be frowned down upon in the world of dog walking is if you, the dog walker, put tracking devices on everybody's dogs. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I feel like there would be true. some real issues uh, in the grand scheme of that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, um, but overall, I think, dude, solid pick. Uh, if I do say so myself, because it was my pick. There's one thing we have to talk about before we wrap up, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you got? What you got? This Devo sounding theme song. Oh, it's that great. We, it's so good. It's so At good. first I thought, is this the offspring? And then I saw the opening credits and it said music from Mark Mothersbaugh, who's yeah. like the lead guy from Devo. And I said, oh, that's definitely who that was it makes was sense Devo. it yeah. makes sense <laughs> yes um an, another another person who was also deeply ingrained in in these shows because i mean like he also did the theme song for what was know, it one of was it Ro one of rob deerdeck's fucking shows wasn't it oh i don't i was gonna say uh rugrats he did the he, rugrats theme. did he do the rugrats he did fucking the rug love it I'm looking at his I'm looking at his list right now. Let's see. He did some stuff that we might know. He did the music for Frosty Returns and Beekman's World. Uh scrolling through. Come on, give me something good here. His his early career is definitely a mixed uh mixed bag. But yeah, he did yeah. Rugrats, Rugrats All Grown Up, um, Rocket Power, uh Steve you know, then he got a lot of Wes uh Wes Anderson movies. So he did like Life Aquatic with Steve Zazu. And uh, Royal Tenenbaums and shit like that as well. Fucking wild. Oh, there it is. His fr Here it is. TV credits. Pee-wee's Playhouse, Rugrats, uh, the Dumb and Dumber cartoon series, uh, Rocket Power. Didn't remember that that was a thing. What? The, the, the Dumb, Dumb and Dumber cartoon oh, series. Oh, boy. I remember. There was a point in time, Dylan, where there were three yeah. cartoons based on three Jim Carrey movies airing at the exact same time. There was an it. Ace Ventura, a Mask, and a Dumb and Dumber cartoon series. Great. Um, apparently, Great. did the theme song for yeah, he did the theme song for regular show. He did the theme song for Blue Mountain yeah. State. Yeah. Uh, he did the theme song for the Aquabat Super Show. And uh, that's kind of the oh, he does the theme song. He apparently he did some of the music for <laughs> he did the music for uh, what we do in the shadows. Our flag means death. Yeah, I saw and that Tiger, too. And Tiger King, murder, mayhem, and madness. Of course. What an eclectic career. Um, it's all right, well, wild. Dylan. Yeah. Uh, I love you, brother. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Bro, I feel like we're cultural appropriating something by saying this. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, Matt. <laughs> whoa, oh, whoa. Hey. 
Hey, welcome to Unstable Topics, a fast-paced, jam-packed, unhinged, bestie podcast filled with facts, reacts, and made-up games in between. We're your hosts, Sarah and Maggie, and we're excited for you to join our best friend hangout, where we surprise one another with things we find interesting or hilarious just to see how the other will react. Our friendship might be totally stable, but you never know what your bestie might throw your way to knock you off your game. So come shake things up, learn something new, and laugh along with us. This is Unstable Topics. Meanwhile, in New Jersey... So, Marissa, what talking points do you want to hit on in this week's episode? Well, Jackie, let's talk about how the film addresses the patriarchy. Ooh, and representation of marginalized people. Ooh, ooh, and even philosophical ramifications of good versus evil and horror. We can point out the triangle boobs, talk about the blood splatter, and oh, the practical effects. Um, and also the male gaze? My gaze at the males. hi From feminism to fangirling, the Jersey Ghouls cover all the bases of horror from a woman's perspective. New episodes are uploaded every other Sunday. Just search Jersey Ghouls to find us on social media and your favorite podcasting app. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 